Hey everyone, once been here at the Battle Report. So uh, this is a game that was uh, one of three during a one-day tournament uh, that's practicing rules for the Brawler Bash tournament this year. And um, namely, one of those rules is that you can bring a Legions of Chaos list. But if you want to bring a Legions list, you um, there are certain stipulations. And so I thought it'd be fun to build a list. I have no intention of bringing this to Brawler Bash because it's not nearly competitive enough, but it's a list I wanted to try. So I thought it was a, is a, a good thing to bring to a uh, just a fun tournament like this. So I'll um, go through my list and through my thoughts behind it uh, in a minute when I go through that. Uh, I'm facing a Warriors of Chaos list. Um, it's 2,500 points. Uh, the way scoring goes for Brawler Bash and therefore for this tournament is you get points based on how much you kill. It doesn't matter if your whole army dies, you get if you kill the other whole army, you still get those points. So it's not about win-loss, which is a mindset that I always struggle to get into every year about this time when I'm preparing for, for Brawler Bash. Anyway, let's go through the Warriors list. He's got some Warhounds on the right. A Chimera, all of his Chimeras have a Flaming Breath and Regen. So Chimera number one, some more War Dogs on the far left in that primed model is uh, Chimera number two. And then there's Chimera number three. In front of Chimera number three is his general. He's Chaos Lord with a... I think he has a three-up armor. He certainly has a three-up ward. He's got the other Trickster Shard and a great weapon. And he's on a disc. Um, some more... Uh, I'm sorry. Some Marauder Horseman Marcus Lanesh. Some more Marauder Horseman Marcus Lanesh. And on the left, he has the uh, Forsaken. A unit of Forsaken with Marcus Lanesh. So that's a unit you don't see very often. I thought was pretty cool. Uh, behind him, he's got a unit of Hellstriders with two more characters. I'll go over their builds in just a second. Look at the bottom of this picture. There's a mountain chimera in the middle of the table. That is part of the terrain. It's a scenario for this game. Uh, it basically has all the stats of a mountain chimera. It cannot move, but if you uh, charge it, it will attack you. And every every uh, if you do more wounds to it than your opponent does, you get an extra, I don't know, 300 victory points. And if it's dead at the end of the game, both of you get 200 victory points, which doesn't matter. Because again, it's not about win-loss. It's about how many uh, victory points can you get total. Anyway, his unit in the back, uh, he's got a Sorcerer Lord on the front left. He's got Lord's level 4 Slanesh uh, and a scroll and all that stuff you see. And then he's got his battle standard bearer with a, what looks to me, it's a one or two up re-rollable sort of might. And then he's got some more Marauder Horsemen and some more Warhounds. So on the far, far right, I've got what looks like the, that model is actually a Cygor. So he's, a, he's the Stone Thrower. Why am I bringing that to an uncomped tourney? Because that's just how I roll. So the Cygor, it sucks. It's so bad. Anywho, you'll understand why later. I've got a unit of Bestigore. They've got the standard of discipline. In the front left, I've got just a level 2 lore of beasts with a scroll in front of it. Uh, and they have Mark of Nurgle, by the way. In front of it is a Tuscor Chariot, Mark of Nurgle. Uh, let's see. Then there's a unit of Gore with extra hand weapon. And in with them, I have my Battle Standard Bear, who I found out in, during the second game of this tournament that I was totally cheating. But basically, I gave him a 4-up ward I'm sorry, a 5-up ward and the Mark of Slanesh, but the unit has the Mark of Nurgle. I didn't realize you couldn't you couldn't do that, uh, so I, I, I fixed it game two. During this game, neither my opponent nor I uh, realized you couldn't do that, so I was cheating inadvertently. Uh, anyway, but that's character number two, my battle standard bearer. Top left of this picture, you see what looks like the beautiful Hyro Titan that a fan of the channel uh, sent to me. I'm using that as a Hell Cannon. That's why there are four Ungor on there representing the, the crew. Um, there's two more Tuscor Chariots at the Mark of Nurgle, and then this unit of Minotaurs is actually a unit of Chaos Trolls, and I have a Doom Bull in there. He is not my normal build. Uh, this guy has a four-up ward, and he has the Blackened Plate. Uh, let's see. Mark of Slanesh. So he's got a three-up ward, and then he has a two-up ward versus Flaming. More importantly, he gives these trolls a four-up ward versus Flaming. So they have either four-up reach in, or four up. Otherwise, if you have flaming, either way, they're pretty durable. So, this is um, what really what I was thinking was um, the problem beastmen have is that they uh, they're just so fragile. There's no there's no very little protection for them. So I was going to give them either Mark of Slanesh or Mark of Nurgle just to give them some protection. I figured, hey, it's a close combat army. Let's go all the way with Mark of Nurgle. 
Um, they don't have any shooting, so I wanted to give them the Cygor and the Hell Cannon, so they have just a little bit of shooting. Uh, for this list, um, I didn't have magic, and the reason why that is is because for this tournament, if you want to bring a Legion's list, you um, you have to pay a tax. So if you want to bring a special choice from another, you have to you have to declare a primary book. It ha your general has to come from that book, and then anything you bring from another book has to have a matching unit from your core book of equal or greater, equal or greater value. So if I wanted to bring a Hell Cannon, I had to bring something in the rare slot. So I brought a Cygor because it, it could also throw a rock. Uh, I wanted to bring the Trolls, so I had to bring the best of gores. That's So it, it um, once you started matching things, especially bringing that worthless Cygor, it really limited your other options. But that's what I was thinking. So he vanguards up like that, and he wins the turn to go first. I was kind of bummed because I kind of like, I would like to throw rocks at him first. And, you know, this is the, the huge disadvantage that infantry armies have when they go against the highly mobile armies that are out there, is the mobile armies get to pick their fights. So the Flying Lord and the three Chimeras are all going to come over to the right and pick on either my Bestigor or my Gore. And being able to gang up four on one is just brutal. My plan on the right is for the Bestigor just to step into the building. And um, I was kind of hoping... I was kind of thinking then that it would kind of force the combats um, more to my other two units, and I have the Hell Cannon right in the middle of things just to, to pose a threat. Uh, but one mistake I made was I thought the Hell Cannon could move and shoot, and now that he couldn't, if I, I assumed I would kind of pivot to the right and be ready to countercharge and pose those threats and still throw a rock. And now that I couldn't, I was kind of screwed with movement. Anywho. He did that. I'm very unhappy with my deployment now, but that was based on my misunderstanding of how things worked. We go to the uh, warrior's magic phase, and he gets through I th with irresistible force. I actually saved my dice because no spell was really uh, worrying me. I was saving it for the um, oh, whatever the slender spell is that gives you random movement, and he got irresistible force. I didn't use any of my dispel dice the whole first turn. And now the Bestigor cannot go into the building. Uh, what I like about the building is he can only attack with one unit at a time, and I think he would just not attack it with anything. Um, anyway, so that's why they're sitting where they are and not in the building. I uh, reposition the trolls a little bit, and for now I'm content just to let the Hell Cannon stay where it is. It's blocking my trolls, but at least he can shoot. Uh, let's see, a chariot charged um, these guys. They ran away. Another chariot charged a unit over here, it ran away, and then redirected into the Chimera. Uh, the wound marker, this is before combat, the wound marker was something that happened in my opponent's turn. It was a magic spell that I wasn't worried about. It did a single wound. Yeah, this is my um, my best to go. Very frustrating, couldn't get in the building. And after combat, yeah, I do zero wounds to the Chimera, and he just slaps around my chariot. So that didn't go as planned. I didn't really think I would... I would win that. I was hoping I would, one, do at least a couple wounds to a Chimera, and two, um, maybe get lucky and survive it as to hold him up so he couldn't quadruple charge me. Warriors turn two. This was the funniest thing. This is one of the, I had two of the funniest moments in Warhammer during this game. This is one of them. Three Chimeras and the Flying Sorcerer Lord all charge by Bestigor. I passed my terror test. From right to left, he needs a seven, an eight, and a nine, and then with a sorcerer lord, I think he needed a an eight, something like that. And this is all on swift stride, so he is very, very likely to get them all in there. So he rolls the chimera that needs a seven, and he fails it. And I'm thinking, okay, the best of gores have a chance because now he's only triple charging him. So he rolls the one with the eight, and he fails it. And I'm like, this is beautiful. The best of gores, I think they can handle a solo chimera and his and his sorcerer lord and his and his chaos lord. The third chimera needs a nine and he fails it. And I'm like, great, bring the lord all by his lonesome into that unit. I am gonna crush him. And he fails it. <laughs> like, what on earth just happened? How do you fail four out of four? That's like me playing my Bretonians. Anyway. It seemed significant at the time. Yeah, they did not want to get into combat. Uh, his fast cab over here failed rally. They kept on running. His uh, f forsaken charged my chariot, and he was pretty far away. So I just held, and I, I liked that because he was unlikely to get into combat. And um, 
Having a failed charge keeps them away from the action, which I think is wonderful. During the magic phase, again, he gets the same spell off. This, I was trying hard to stop this, and it just didn't happen. So again, I can't go in the building. I thought these guys were saved. Now I pop in the building, and now if he has, wants to charge my gore, he's unlikely to get all of them into combat. It gives me more rounds of shooting, option, uh, more time to maneuver my troops, all that kind of stuff, and these guys stumble forward. Very frustrating. Uh, let's see. Legions of Chaos, turn two. Um, the beastmen do not go in the, the best score do not go in the building because they can't. My doom bull fails the stupidity test with the trolls and they stumble forward. <laughs> Damn it. <sighs> okay. Um, my chariot on the left charged something and failed. I think he fled with his, with his fast caver dogs or something. Yeah, it's the chariot failing. Uh, if you look on the left, that chariot charged dogs over there. He fled and I failed it. I don't care. I don't really need these things. The problem here is a chariot that's close to the Forsaken. It just makes for too easy of a charge, and I'm because I stumbled forth my with my troll unit. I can't exactly counter charge my turn. So if he charges, I'm just gonna have to flee. Uh, the um, Hell Cannon shoots and misfires, and all four of the uh, Chaos handlers die. Uh, and this guy goes to throw a rock and drops it on his own head, causing himself a wound. So I spent a fortune in points to get a little bit of shooting to the beast, for the beastman, and it's done jack squat. It's done nothing. Nothing. Warriors turn three. Yeah, he um, takes his Chaos Lord and two Chimeras into the Bestigore unit. He didn't bring the third one in because it just flat out wouldn't fit because of the building. He moves Fast Cav up so that I can't counter charge with my gore unit and uh, his his BSB and spellcaster with the the health striders they're all the way on the right hand side now they've moved around and if you look at the top left his forsaken charge my chariot I fled and he failed the charge so there's that there's that. that is just not going to go well uh, luckily he has to issue a challenge so I refuse which sends my my uh, spellcaster to the back so at least saves him uh, my hope here is to be steadfast, which I think I should be, but the problem is I have no hope of countercharging because my I'm just out of position. My Cygore could have countercharged and maybe did something, but I thought my best score would be in the building, so he's out of position. And of course, his fast caver blocking the other countercharge. So my best score are probably just going to be screwed. Uh, during the magic phase, he gets something off, does two wounds to my Cygore. I think I'm using the right, I think I'm using Cygore is the right word. Uh, the stone thrower dude. Who, I'm going to call him a cyborg if I'm wrong. Just forgive me. So legions turn three. I pass the stupidity test of the trolls and my general uh, charges out of them. There's a rules question, by the way. If the trolls feather stupidity, can a character who doesn't suffer from stupidity still do something like leave the unit? I don't know. It didn't matter this time. But that's what happened. Now, I charge my gore in two into the fast cav. Uh, we're going to just kill the fast cav. My my uh, doom bowl gets to overrun but he has to roll a four or higher to get into the chimera. And remember, he has the blood greed rule, so he only rolls a single d6. So there's that. Um, yeah, I took the, um, the hell cannon and decided just to charge the flank of those forsaken. I thought that might go well, and he failed his charge. And after combat, yeah, so I did... Oh, wait... Hold on a second. Yeah, this is after combat. So I did get plus one strength and toughness up on these guys. It helped a little bit. Uh, I don't think he used his breath weapons. I think this is... I don't. He might have used one. I don't think he did. I think this is just two chimeras and a Chaos Lord. Uh, but my Bestigore hitting back did two wounds to the Chaos Lord. That's pretty sweet. Dude, that's a three-up ward save. And uh, failed two. I think I did three wounds and he failed two of them. So I got pretty lucky there. So I felt that was pretty nice. That was on his turn, by the way. So we go to my turn. This is before combat. I'm showing you what happened after his combat. We go to my turn. I throw dice to get the plus one strength and toughness buff up. That's what happened. I get irresistible force. Then I roll a six, which means I laid... Uh, I roll a seven, which means that every model in base contact sticks, takes a strength six hit. And I do the last wound to the Chaos Lord. <laughs> he takes the strength six hit. It wounds him, gets past his armor, gets past his ward, and he dies. <laughs> That was pretty funny. I think my unit is still dead just from two Chimeras, though. 
And over here, I move my Saigo around the building a little bit because I can throw that rock at any distance. And um, I think he is beyond the point of getting a lookout, sir, I think. So I want to drop a rock on his, his BSB and or his uh, Spellcaster. They both have taken a wound. They only have one wound left. I throw the rock and it lands on my head. After combat, yeah, the best of gores break and uh, he reforms with one with one Chimera, he overruns with the other one. I think he tried to restrain, but it failed its test. And, oh, and obviously my Doom Bull did not roll high enough to get into that combat, because that would have made a big difference. So we go to, to Warriors turn four. So two Chimeras charge my Gore unit. A unit of dogs and a unit of uh, Fast Cav charge my Doom Bull. My Doom Bull. It's a great it's a great, great ploy because I'm, I'm almost certainly going to win that and then I have to overrun, which is going to take me facing directly away from all those chimeras. My trolls, meanwhile, are on the left doing absolutely nothing because my deployment was so incredibly bad. <laughs> yeah, there's that. And after combat, he kills a ton. I reform to get ranks. And yeah, that's not... Uh, very good, but at least this way, if my Doom Bull charges away, the trolls can charge the flank of that Chimera, and I think should do pretty well. So we go to Lizardman, we go to Lizardman, Legion's turn four, and it's at this point that somebody tells us we only have like 10, 15 minutes left in the game, I th I mean, or eight minutes left, in, whatever it was, it was just nothing, and it really surprised me. Um, and I 100% blame my opponent for that. I was teasing him all through the game for, for taking a long time to do stuff, and I will tease him again in the battle report. So the trolls charge in, the Doom Bull charges some dogs, the Hell Cannon charges the Forsaken, because I just want to see how that plays out. I mean, it's a very low-stakes tournament here. Uh, this guy, remember, he's taken two wounds from an enemy's spell and two wounds from dropping a rock on his head. He moves over, because he's going to drop a rock on their head again and just try to snipe a character. There's that. I will almost certainly... Well, I will certainly win it. And there's that. I have no idea what's going to happen. I don't really care. I'm just kind of curious. And there's the trolls. And after combat, yeah, it was pretty much a fail all the way around. The the um, the Cygor misses with the rock. Uh, my trolls do maybe one or two wounds to that guy. I think he, um, uh, yeah, he just anyway not enough. And I think I think the um, Chimera has actually won that combat. Uh, my BSB survived so far, but he only has one wound left. And the Hell Cannon, I think, did a total of two wounds on the Forsaken, and they did one wound on him, and it was just kind of a push. Yeah, just very disappointing with that. I don't know what I was hoping. I mean, the uh, the Chimera's doing their attacks. They probably used their breath weapons. Obviously, they did, they did a bunch of wounds. I was hoping the Trolls would kill the one, uh, save me from that Thunder Stomp, and add... Uh, some combat res there. Uh, anyway, regardless, it wasn't to happen. And yeah, there's that fail. So that was the end of the game. And um, I was I was in a bad position from the start. It was just really bad deployment um, and probably a lot of bad decision making. Uh, but yeah, at this point, if we had gone one more turn, the Warriors player was about to just rack up a lot of points. He had a Chimera about to counter charge into the Gore unit. The Gores are going to be wiped out. My BSB would have been wiped out and probably would have had enough combat res to wipe out those trolls uh, or to break the trolls from combat. Um, and my, my Doom Bull's out of position because he's, you know, charging and having to overrun with Frenzy and stuff. So uh, had the game gone on, it would have gone all the Warriors way. But <laughs> I would say that the whole game, man, you're taking way too long to do stuff and ended up hurting them. And actually, um, I think my opponent got like 1,500 points and I got like 1,100. Um, but again, it doesn't matter who got more or less. It's how many you get total. So really, for the most part, it wasn't a great showing for either one of us because you just want to kill a bunch of stuff and there's still a bunch of stuff left on the table. And that's a real problem with this kind of tournament is you really need to finish all six turns. You need to both be aggressive and just kill stuff. But I think both of us are trying to just get into the broader bash mindset again. So I wasn't pleased with how this army worked. I mean, in some ways, yeah, I took a close combat army and made it a little bit better with those marks. Um, but man, I paid such a heavy, heavy price for shooting and it just did nothing. And I don't know. I, I like this is kind of a kind of a I don't know if fluffy's the right word, but kind of a, a different uh, beastman army. And yeah, it just was very, very disappointing.
Fun game, nonetheless. Hope you enjoyed it. Hey everyone, once bitten here. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. As you know, YouTube has several functions you can use to interact with videos such as this. Uh, you can like the video, you can leave a comment, you can favorite the video. Uh, I want you to know that, that I appreciate it when you do things like that. It feels much more interactive than simply me talking to a screen. So if you're willing to do so, please like, comment, and favorite the videos. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want, and you certainly are welcome to share this video on your blog or other websites if you are so inclined. Again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.